Hi, I'm Stephanie Hertz, Marketing Director here at Warwick Forest. Today I'm talking to you from our small wellness classroom where we have a variety of exercise options and physical therapy for our residents here at Warwick Forest. Today I'm introducing Chris Nichols. He has been with Patriots Colony Rehab Department since early 2003 and has assisted in the Medicare accreditation process for the skilled nursing facility and the accreditation and startup of the outpatient rehab of Patriots Colony, as well as the startup and accreditation of Sanders Retirement Community Rehab under Riverside Health System. He has also worked for the Riverside Pediatric Therapies in early intervention. Chris attended Radford University for therapeutic recreation, Jefferson College for his degree in occupational therapy, and St. Joseph's College for his bachelor's in health administration. Currently, Chris is pursuing his master's degree in health administration at St. Joseph's College in Maine. Chris lives in Williamsburg with his wife, two children, and a labradoodle named Bentley. His interests include cycling, boating, cooking, entertaining, and spending time with family. Please welcome Chris speaking today about continuous care retirement communities and quality of life. I'm sorry, I think I was on mute there. I'd like to welcome everybody to the lecture today. I'm Chris McCose and uh, uh, Rehab Director of Patriots Colony. Um, today I'll be speaking on uh, continuous care retirement communities and their relationship with quality of life. So um, today's lecture, uh, We'll start off with a little introdu introduction, uh, a little bit more about myself. Um, we will also look into defining quality of life. Uh, quality of life can mean different things for different people. Um, so I wanted to kind of really look into a agreed upon definition for, uh, for quality of life. We'll be speaking a lot about continuous care retirement communities, uh, what they are, what they include, and, uh, and kind of get a good idea um, for everyone as far as what continuous care retirement community is, you'll hear me a lot of times in the lecture today refer to a continuous care retirement community as a CCRC, um, which, uh, which is in the medical field, we use a lot of, a lot of these uh, acronyms for things, but CCRC, if I mention that, um, I'm referring to a continuous care retirement community. Uh, we'll be digging down into some research and data based on, uh, on uh, quality of life um, as it pertains to a CCRC. And, um, Really, toward the end of the, uh, the lecture, we'll be talking about some, some theoretical frameworks on aging, um, really uh, focused on the, the social aging aspect of things. And um, at the end, uh, we'll, we'll kind of summarize everything that we've discussed today uh, to, to really just tie things together. So a little bit about me. I'm a preacher's kid, um, other, otherwise known as a PK, if we want to get back to those acronyms. Um, so as a, as a preacher's kid, my dad was a Methodist minister, and we moved around every probably five years, uh, give or take, really up and down the East Coast. Um, but I, I found myself at the end of my high school in um, Christiansburg, Virginia, which is out by Virginia Tech. And um, I ended up uh, attending Radford University um, in therapeutic recreation. Along the way at Radford, I realized that therapeutic recreation wasn't quite what I was looking to do and uh, made a transition to Jefferson College of Health Sciences where I um, attained my degree in occupational therapy. I worked in occupational therapy for quite some time, um, but uh, not all of that time was actually in, in as, as much uh, clinical treatment as others because I, I transitioned pretty early on to a, to a rehab director position and got a little more, more involved in the administrative side of things and, and really truly found that, that what I really liked was leadership and uh, leadership is what I found the most important to me. Um, so I, I, I decided to go back to school, become a student again. <clears throat> it was great timing considering I was uh, already a rehab director, a father and a husband. Um, so uh, yeah, I decided to take on a little bit more, um, got, my, uh, got a second degree in um, in um, health administration and currently uh, getting toward the end of my master's um, in health administration as well. Uh, personally, I consider myself a father, a husband, a father, and a coach. Um, the idea of quality of life has always been extremely important to me. Everything I've done, um, I've always kind of been focused on quality of life. I remember even as a kid, my mom used to uh, tease me because I used to talk about the good life and 
what we could do to have the good life. And what I was really referring to as I look back now was this well-rounded life of, of things that, um, that really pertain to quality. Um, how do I get the most satisfaction out of life? And um, I really, I really work on that with my own family where we're, we, I try to provide well-rounded experiences. Um, I'd mentioned I'm a coach, so I, I coach tennis and I coach uh, soccer. <clears throat> I've had the opportunity to coach both of my kids in <clears throat> both of those sports. Uh, most recently, a lot of us have made um, pandemic purchases. And for us, one of those pandemic purchases was actually a boat um, to expand our, our world out into the uh, water. Living in Williamsburg, Virginia, I realized that I was neglecting this whole world of, of, uh, of water sports. And um, so, so we've been doing boating. We, we love travel. I uh, like to provide a lot of social experiences. That's been difficult during the pandemic. But in the normal world, um, we have a lot, of fan, a lot of get togethers at my house, a lot of friends and family. Um, really, really love to, to just uh, have that camaraderie that's involved in, in different social interactions. Music is very important to me. It's important to my family as well. My, my son there, Bryce, plays the trumpet. <clears throat> my daughter's just started on the flute this year. And I am a avid but not very skilled guitarist. So uh, really enjoy playing guitar. I play guitar um, probably every single day of my life. It brings a, a real new dimension into my life. And um, it's a great stress reliever and, and it's a great creative outlet. So love to play my guitar. Um, and then home renovations, another one that we've, we've been doing recently, we, we purchased a couple years ago, our, our dream home in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia, but that dream home needed a little bit of help. So uh, over the past two years, we've gone through some pretty extensive renovations, which has been a great learning experience and a great, uh, great activity for the family. Um, We've done some of that renovation through hard work and some of that renovation through hiring people that didn't know what we or, or knew how to do what we did not know how to do. So uh, it, it's been great though. Just really like that, like improving things. So <clears throat> again, these are these are areas that I've always uh, kind of pushed toward to really create life satisfaction or, or quality of life, in other words. So what you see there is a picture of the, the entrance to the beautiful uh, continuous care retirement community that I. Uh, work at five days a week. So Monday through Friday, and every once in a while on a weekend, um, I'm driving into that beautiful entrance and uh, and working there at Patriots Colony. So after 20 years of, of driving into that entrance, I, <clears throat> I've come to the conclusion that our residents really do have a quality of life, something I aspire to um, as I age. Um, this I, I see how the residents of Patriots Colony live their life, and it's it's one that's it's well-rounded, like like the life that I I enjoy, and um, and and I see people happy and having fun. So it it really is what spurred me to do this research project, um, and then and then kind of develop it into a lecture. Um, because what I really started thinking about is how do you define quality of life? It's something I feel, but but is there a, a way that I can actually put a definition to this idea of quality of life? Um, my next question was, am I right? Do, does living in a continuous care retirement community actually um, have an effect on quality of life, a positive effect, one that um, creates a higher level quality? And then the most challenging question, with a vague definition <clears throat> of quality of life, how can we quantify that? That's, a, that's an important thing. Um, they say proof is in the pudding. And um, I really needed to find some research that could show some type of correlation between quality of life and living in a CCRC. So really that's where I ventured out on this whole project. So looking into a definition for quality of life, I, <clears throat> I did a lot of research on the, on the project and one, I, I found many definitions that had a lot of similarities, but the one that spoke to me the most was uh, the definition um, from social scientist Jacqueline Weinstock. She uh, defined quality of life as having these common dimensions um, and having a balance between these dimensions. And the dimensions that she came up with were physical well being, functional well being. Um, she actually differentiates social and emotional well being for the sake of brevity. I've, I've actually combined them because I do see a, a really high link between social and emotional well being. Um, but uh, being able to, to have these three areas uh, well-balanced um, is, is how she defines quality of life. So 
if we look at physical well-being, um, you could really sum that up um, as uh, well-being, uh, the, the, really the state of overall uh, physical health. Um, you know, we, we can look at that more in, in, as a therapist, as an occupational therapist, I, you know, I'd, I'd refer to this as a, a strength, range of motion, um, balance, um, endurance, how, you know, can, can, we, can we do things for the length of time that we need to do them um, physically, or do we fatigue too quickly to accomplish that? Functional uh, well-being dimension, um, this is where we, we tie some of that physical well-being into uh, physical functioning. And, um, Physical functioning has a, a few different areas. Uh, one is doing meaningful activities. These can be, you know, activities we need to do or activities that we would desire to do. Um, um, so, so we could include even uh, leisure and recreational activities um, into that. So, if we have a good functional well-being, we're able to continue to participate in these meaningful activities. Um, and yeah, we mentioned recreational activities, um, activities of daily living where uh, those recreational activities might be different for different people. Um, you know, some people might like uh, recreational activities that involve um, more sports and, and, and uh, physically active um, activities. Some people may like recreational activities that are more cognitive in nature. Activities of daily living do tend to be more similar for everyone. Um, as an occupational therapist, this is my world, activities of daily living. Um, we call those ADLs, um, back to those acronyms again. But activities of daily living, um, the common activities of daily living that people would be uh, participating in would be being able to get out of bed in the morning, um, being able to, um, you know, fully get dressed, uh, you know, donning pants, shirt, socks, and shoes, um, being able to use the bathroom when we need to, being able to uh, feed ourselves um, a meal. Those are all common uh, things that we need for survival. So being able to maintain that functional well-being is the next dimension of quality of life. Um, for social and emotional well-being, we, we actually look at um, maybe some of the things that we don't desire, such as isolation. Um, as we become more isolated, that social emotional well-being is um, also going to decrease in uh, correspondence with that. So uh, we're, we're looking for camaraderie um, and being able to uh, combat isolation as we age. Another area for social and emotional well-being, um, I believe, is human assistance. That human assistance can be um, like social emotional assistance of, of having, you know, that, that confidant that you need, those people um, just to relate to, to uh, have conversations with. Um, but our social and emotional well-being also relies on the human assistance we need for other tasks. So, uh, so um, being able to have that type of, of human interaction and human assistance is, uh, is very important to maintain social um, and emotional well-being. Um, so next, uh, I think most people are familiar with a, a continuous care retirement community or a CCRC. Um, Patriots Colony is, is one, um, Warwick Forest is another. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about that just for anybody that's not quite clear on what, what a, con a continuous care retirement community entails. Uh, but a, a continuous care retirement community has independent living, assisted living, and convalescent care at least. So uh, you will find that some continuous care retirement communities do have some other type uh, levels of care, such as memory care, um, which, is, uh, which is focused for uh, residents that have Alzheimer's disease or, or another type of dementia. Um, but they do have these specific levels of care uh, that provide services for a specific need. So, uh, so the idea behind that is that if somebody is in a community and let's say they move in a little bit younger into an independent living apartment, should the need arise that they need more assistance, um, they'd be able to transition to another level of care, um, effectively aging in place in the same community and um, be able to accommodate by having the uh, services that they need in that level of care. Um, another common concept, concept that you're gonna see in a CCRC is a lot of an amenities. Um, when I first started working at Patriots Colony, I was actually a newlywed and I'd just gotten back from a vacation to an all-inclusive resort uh, down in Mexico. And I came to Patriots Colony and 
I said, wow, this is actually just like an all-inclusive resort, um, but one that you live at rather than one that you spend a week at. So uh, really neat. But um, those commonalities were that the amenities were, um, were many. And uh, this is another area that's going to vary by location. So, uh, you know, if you were looking at a CCRC, you'd want to have uh, the ability to familiarize yourself with what amenities each, uh, each community has. But commonly, you're going to see really a, a flexible dining um, plan um, that, that has uh, typically at least one, if not more than one, uh, dining setting, uh, which would be similar to like a, a restaurant in the neighborhood. Um, you'll, you'll find also that a CCRC is going to have a fitness department, which is going to uh, have, have uh, services related to cardiac fitness, um, strength training, balance training. Um, a, a lot of times you're going to find uh, aquatics, aerobics, uh, Pilates, um, and, and uh, you know, many others. Um, that CCRC is also going to have an activities department, which will be organizing activities um, within the community and outside the community, um, such as uh, uh, trips and outings. Um, they are. They also oversee lecture series, kind of similar to the one that we're on today. Um, uh, just many, many varied activities you'll find. Uh, those activities are typically reflective of uh, the residents' needs and desires um, in their planning process. Uh, CCRCs are also going to have housekeeping and maintenance. Um, uh, of course, the housekeeping is going to do your traditional housekeeping of, um, of cleaning, vacuuming, um, sometimes changing linens, uh, uh, just a, a lot of the, the house upkeep. And the maintenance department is, is uh, available for modifications and upgrades, as well as routine maintenance on um, things like uh, HVAC, uh, replacing a roof, um, all, those, all those things that you might have to do at your own house. Um, a CCRC is going to have a maintenance department to take those responsibilities over. Uh, CCRCs will typically also have chaplain services, and the chaplain is there to uh, lead the spiritual side of the, uh, of the community. Um, another common area is transportation, uh, getting to and from appointments, um, and uh, providing, providing that, that car ride that somebody might need. CCRCs will also have health care. Um, there will be a provider um, typically on staff, usually in the form of a medical director. Uh, you'll have therapy, um, which compromises of physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy for rehabilitation needs. Uh, you'll, you'll see nursing staff that are um, available. Um, and at least at Patriots Colony, uh, the nursing staff is available for all levels of care. So if somebody is living in independent living but needs uh, INR checks for blood thinners or, um, or, or uh, blood sugar checks or maybe a, a, a wound dressing or anything like that, we do have a nursing staff that can, that can uh, take on that responsibility. Um, there are also uh, commonly psychiatric services and um, many CCRCs also include a dietitian. A uh, registered dietitian is, is a great asset to uh, really uh, managing, um, managing chronic conditions and um, recommending diets for uh, really a health-centered approach. CCRC also has a physical environment with seniors in mind. So even during the construction process in a CCRC, you will find that the environment is focused on accessibility, um, ADA recommendations, um, providing any type of modifications as, as new information comes out or new devices come out. Um, and then there's this idea of proximity. Um, the CCRC being really kind of an all-inclusive type uh, community, uh, things are put together in a way that, that, that nothing's too far away or, or too, too inaccessible to get to, um, including, um, including parking. And then, in my opinion, one of the most important areas is the social structure of a CCRC. Um, with some of these areas that I've already talked about, activities and, and fitness and dining, um, there's a real, uh, really vast set of opportunities um, to, to, to really create camaraderie between people. A CCRC is a retirement community, so, so usually the people living in that are at a similar stage in life. Uh, and many times you'll find that, me, that many um, residents will have uh, a lot of common, um, common interests. So you'll see groups, teams, and clubs focused around uh, areas that people have in common. Um, so uh, 
so that's a, in a nutshell uh, what a continuous care retirement community uh, really looks like. So back on quality of life, how can that CCRC we just talked about address the dimensions of quality of life, um, physical well-being, functional well-being, and social emotional well-being? Well, first of all, that idea of levels of care, convalescent center, assisted living, and independent living, there's, there's a, a place for everyone in a continuous care retirement community. And there's always a place for your future needs as well. So as so the idea here is that a person is able to age in place and the community um, is able to provide uh, the a different a different level of care to match what those physical needs are. So we're able to to, to really have an environment in the same community with the same comrades that we've had um, and and have that community really be able to adjust to our, our changing needs as we age. Physical well-being also is addressed by providers on site. Um, chronic disease management is a huge, huge plus in, um, in maintaining physical well-being, but sometimes it might be a little difficult to get to a provider. Um, so you need to see that physician on a regular basis, but it's, it can be challenging, especially if transportation becomes an issue. Uh, having provider services on site really helps uh, helps decrease that uh, that burden and and um, and and helps to uh, have regular provider visits to maintain a, a high physical well being. Um, and we had also discussed rehabilitation. Uh, this is a, you know part of my own heart here. Um, having on site uh, physical occupational speech therapy services, um, I think, is great for physical well being because. Um, Many times we think of rehabilitation as a service that we uh, need after an injury, and yes, certainly we do that, but um, another really important uh, thing that we do is to address uh, deficits before they become an injury. So, for example, if, um, if um, somebody's balance is decreasing, um, they're going to be at higher risk for a fall, and if they're at higher risk for a fall, they're at higher risk for a, a, a fracture, which can be devastating. So, um, we can, maintain, we can maintain physical well-being through an active rehabilitation program to kind of, as, as Barney Fife from Andy Griffith would say, to nip things in the bud. Um, it really address the concern before it becomes a bigger concern. Um, I had also mentioned our, our wellness and fitness. Um, so these, these programs can also may help with that dimension of physical well-being through just, a, just maintaining a high level of fitness, um, cardiac fitness, strength and balance fitness, um, our wellness program includes, uh, like, like I said, that chronic disease management, um, diabetic monitoring, um, 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 INR monitoring, things like that, and as well as uh, that dietitian I had mentioned who can be right at, you know, at a phone call away to be able to schedule an appointment and really go over uh, uh, the, the most healthy diet and, and really helping people understand those diet choices. Um, from a physical well-being standpoint, too, I'd mentioned that the overall physical environment is done with a lot of thought in mind, and you'll find at a CCRC, you're going to have really nice places to walk. You'll find paved trails. Um, typically, when I'm driving in and driving out of Patriots Colony, I will always see a lot of our wonderful, wonderful residents walking dogs and walking with friends on our trails um, and, and just maintaining their physical well-being in that way. And then uh, again, with the physical structure of the facility, you'll find equipment um, that can maintain physical well-being, um, uh, modifications to, to bathrooms, modifications to uh, um, um, different areas of living. So for instance, our assisted living um, provides uh, uh, handrails along the walls. So if somebody does have some balance deficit, that equipment is there um, that they can get around a little bit easier. Um, even if they're not quite at a walker level, um, they would have something to hold on to. Um, I'm not sure about anyone on the call, but I actually at my home don't have the luxury of railings going down my hallways. <laughs> uh, functional well-being. Um, the functional well-being, as I mentioned, really ties into how we can maintain our function and meaningful activities uh, throughout life. Um, and again, I've put levels of care here too, because uh, there are instances where people's physical well-being has influenced their functional well-being to a 
point where they can't recover that. Um, and I'll give you an example would be if somebody had a stroke and they did lose function of one side of their body, they might not get all the way back um, to um, the physical side that they were at before, but we want them to maintain function. So those levels of care can kind of come in and, and, and really make up um, for some of the lack of function by providing assistance in those areas. So um, it's always important for, for people to be in the proper level of care to uh, maintain their highest level of function. Um, again, from a functional well-being standpoint, uh, ADA is involved in the construction process and in our ongoing operations as well. So as, as, uh, as, the, the, as, a, as CCRC is being constructed and, and um, as new um, creative ideas come out, uh, the, uh, the physical structure um, is there to accommodate um, the potential needs for a senior. So uh, that's, a, that's a really great way to maintain function as well. Proximity is uh, great. Again, this is you know kind of back to that all-inclusive environment type uh, um, idea uh, with the CCRC. Uh, things things are are close by. Uh, things that you need are close by. So it's not such a chore to get to the the different uh, services um, or uh, opportunities that you might want to. Um, and as we age, the you know sometimes the the possibility of driving ourselves to different things becomes less and less. So having all that kind of under one roof um, leads to uh, just a, a prolonging of function. Um, it, it, the the accessibility of a CCRC is is very high. You're going to find that. Uh, the, the toilets are in a raised position. There are ramps where there need to be ramps. There are handrails where there need to be handrails. Um, it, the, the, the construction um, promotes that accessibility. Accessibility promotes function. So uh, we get a great tie in there. And I had mentioned that transportation issue. Um, CCRCs do provide transportation typically. It is a, it's always something to, that you would want to look at. But um, transportation doesn't always become um, a concern until we don't have it anymore. Um, and if you think about the amount of independence transportation gives us, if we're able to get into a car and drive to where we need to go, um, if that's taken away, it can be a real challenge to maintain our functional well-being. Um, a CCRC can accommodate for that through uh, transportation programs. Uh, from a social, emotional um, dimension for quality of life, uh, really, we want to combat loneliness. Uh, in in our senior years, there is um, there is most always a, a, a certain level of loss, um, whether that loss be through uh, friends and family or or uh, other acquaintances. Um, the 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 world, the social world, tends to get smaller and smaller um, if we're isolated. And um, a CCRC does uh, provide ongoing social. Um, social outlets to uh, combat that loneliness and, and that isolation as well. Uh, CCRC is also going to have emotional support services. Those could be through our social, um, social work department, our chaplain, and um, typically our, uh, our psych services. And then there's this sense of community and camaraderie. We're going to see this theme come up um, a little bit later in today's lecture, um, but the, uh, this, um, this sense of community um, being in an area with uh, individuals much like ourselves, um, we find that there's a lot of common interests and we really, really uh, kind of grow into a new set of friends sometimes, a new set of, uh, in a, a whole new quality of life. And then um, last, uh, autonomy. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about this too, but, but the autonomy in a CCRC is really interesting because uh, leadership of the CCRC um, from an administrative and board of directors standpoint um, really makes their moves based on um, uh, needs and desires of the residents. So um, there's always a really like hand in hand relationship between a CCRC's residents and the CCRC's uh, leadership team. So my next, uh, my next idea here was how was I gonna quantify uh, quality of life in a CCRC? When we just looked at some pretty decent um, things that a CCRC does to increase quality of life. And we also made that definition of what quality of life is, tied those two together, but can we actually prove it? Um, can, we, can we show 
a quantitative um, analysis of uh, how a CCRC um, can affect quality of life? And the, the answer is yes, we, we absolutely can. Um, I looked at four different studies, which are list, listed here. Um, we'll go into those in a little more detail here. I, I chose four studies that actually really kind of looked at different demographics and slightly different research methods so that I have kind of a well-rounded uh, <clears throat> ability to, to quantify this uh, idea of quality of life in the CCRC. Uh, the first study um, I wanted to discuss was the My Life site survey. Uh, this was done in 2019. Um, it was 430 participants, and it's important to understand on, on this study, they were looking at, at people who were not living in a CCRC, but were actively engaged or considering a move to a CCRC. So really looking at, at, uh, at the questions, um, what is the most important thing these, these individuals were considering um, for their move? Um, what is the most important area that they've had for delaying a move? And uh, what do they find commonly to be the most, most appealing characteristics of a continuous care retirement community? Uh, results of the My Life site uh, um, survey, most important was access to a continuum of care. 63% uh, of ind individuals in this study said that that um, idea of having independent living, assisted living and convalescent care in the same community was their number one reason. So these are individuals who are really planning ahead and really looking for an insurance policy that they'd be able to stay age in place and that they would be able to uh, decrease being a burden on, on, on say uh, adult children or, or anything like that. But they, they, were, they were really finding that the um, access to continuum of care was the most important feature that they were looking at. Uh, most important reason for delaying a move um, was not a big surprise to me. It was financial viability at 56% um, of respondents uh, citing financial viability being the leading uh, reason for, de for delaying a move. Um, having worked in this uh, for about 20 years, um, what I have uh, noticed is that when people do start uh, comparing in a CCRC, you're really looking at kind of a bundled uh, package of, of, um, of everything under a, under a dollar amount, and that dollar amount can look pretty high, but I always encourage people to take a, a real deep dive into their own expenses and figure out exactly what they're paying to live um, a life outside of a CCRC and what they're getting for that, because uh, many times those numbers don't look a whole lot different than the all-inclusive amount when you start adding in things like home maintenance, um, the amount of uh, groceries and food that you're purchasing outside, um, the, uh, the other services, maybe lawn care, um, housekeeping, and things like that that you might be paying in an outside environment, um, those numbers start uh, becoming more and more close and sometimes uh, really do favor the CCRC's uh, uh, cost. And then uh, most appealing, um, uh, right at my heartstrings, high quality food and flexible dining settings. I love food. I love going out to eat and I love cooking. So I can totally understand that appeal of, um, of the dining options that, that people find in a continuous care retirement community, um, the, the different settings that they can make use of, um, and the, the quality of food typically. Um, and I know here at Patriots Colony, our food's just excellent. So, uh, the next uh, most appealing um, that the participants noted was uh, lifelong learning experiences. And that's similar to what we're on today. Uh, um, most CCRCs are going to have um, really regular uh, lifelong learning experiences. Those can be through, um, through clubs and, uh, and um, classes. They can also be through lecture series. So uh, I, I've seen many interesting lectures uh, go up here at Patriots Colony last week, I think it was, we had a history of wine in the world, which was, which was a, a really interesting topic. Um, but those lectures can be on anything from, um, from uh, financial planning to uh, computer uh, learning to um, um, real estate and investments. So uh, re really varied and many times um, uh, very well um, directed toward uh, resident desire. And then we'd mentioned that transportation, but the, the, the fourth most appealing um, area was uh, 
the flexible transportation. So, so people are aware that if transportation becomes a problem, that could be a huge uh, change in life. And uh, having that flexible transportation program within a CCRC is, is definitely life altering. The next uh, study um, was that of the Senior Housing and Life Survey. Um, again, kind of a different demographic we looked at here on this survey. This is 153 residents, board members, and administrators of a single nonprofit CCRC. So this study was actually conducted by the University of Vermont, of Vermont's uh, Center on Aging, and they, they looked at a, a CCRC and did a, a, a deep dive into the, uh, the views and relationships um, between um, between facility leadership or, or, or community leadership and uh, residents. Survey had nine, 19 open-ended questions. Um, and this survey was actually conducted by individual one-on-one -on -one interviews with, uh, with, with um, recipients of this survey. So uh, topics that really included culture, quality of life, uh, relationships, activities, uh, organizational structure, um, opportunities, challenges, and tensions. And the senior housing and life uh, survey results really uh, came, came down to three top themes that they found um, were real indicators of quality of life in a CCRC. Um, and the, the top one was actually sense of community. Um, residents noted a sense of belonging. Um, they, they, also, they also made um, a connection with their new community to, as, as to having a new home and family. Um, the next was, uh, was residents felt that they were they had higher levels of active engagement in the community. So um, they 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 found that that CCRC really really increased um, their their engagement with life, uh, social um, so, social type uh, programming, um, intellectual and and physical programming, and then third. <clears throat> Third most important was an integration of this idea of autonomy between residents of the community and leadership of the community where, 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 where everybody kind of came together as one and uh, residents found that that gave them a strong sense of dignity. Um, they, felt, they felt privacy and they felt, um, they felt uh, worthwhile. So the third study, and this is by far the largest study I looked at and um, really, really a good study for a couple of reasons. This, this was actually done on 80 uh, US uh, CCRCs. Um, there were over 5,000 participants involved in this study. And one thing that I really liked about this study is they did use a home-based control group. So the same, um, the same questionnaire was given to um, the, the active residents in a CCRC um, as well as the active um, home-based uh, control group. So uh, in that way, we, we were able to really look at uh, data that was collected on, on how, how people living at home responded to the same questions as people living in a CCRC. Study also took over three years. Um, it focused on 24 measures. Um, those measures really wanted to, uh, it really had the goal um, of um, insight into cognitive, physical, uh, psychosocial and overall, overall well-being. Um, so this age well study, um, these are the results that they found when this data was all compiled and, we, and, and they were able to compare um, the data gathered from the CCRC residents with the home-based control group. What they did find was that the CCR residents tend to have a greater emotional, social, physical, intellectual, and vocational wellness. They were able to. They, they found that CCR residents reported um, significantly more healthy behaviors. Um, obviously, we talked about all the opportunities, so uh, people tend to make use of those opportunities, especially if you have that social uh, support system to, uh, uh, to 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 go out and do things that that are healthy behaviors. Uh, CCRC, re CCRC residents noted that the move um, somewhat or greatly improved their social wellness. Uh, the study also showed that CCR, uh, CCRC residents reported higher life satisfaction, so they scored higher in, in, uh, high, in uh, life satisfaction, better on mood, um, and had more positive perceptions of the aging process, um, less stress, um, 
which I would gather would be from letting the uh, community really deal with a lot of those stressors so that we can, you know, kind of sit back and just enjoy quality of life. And uh, they also had a higher perceived control over their lives, which I thought was really interesting because you think if you're joining a community, you might be giving up some, um, some control over your life, but the opposite was noted that people felt more in control of their lives in the CCRC uh, group. Uh, study also showed CCRC residents had lower levels of depression, better diets and overall um, health than the control group. And um, they did find that 92% of CCRC residents reported that they were in a quote, highly satisfied with their living arrangements. So really nice data came from that. Um, and I think really uh, a big part of that was by uh, having a control group to compare, um, compare things with that home-based control group. Uh, last study I looked at was the National Research Center, NRC. Um, this is a little bit different because this uh, survey is an annual survey that, uh, that CCRCs and other health um, institutions as well use. National Research Center compiles data um, and provides a survey. And these surveys are a little different because they're actually used by CCRCs to, to benchmark against the, the, their, their peers. Um, and um, you know, we use these, uh, these benchmarks to see what we're doing well, what we need to do better, what residents desire. Um, so it's a really nice way um, to have a good quality improvement program in a CCRC and NRC really helps out with that. But NRC is a huge data center. And I thought, hey, I bet NRC has some great data um, that they have that, that they can pr provide some national averages and, and national norms on some of these areas that we could take a look at. So uh, I pulled their information too and, and uh, pulled some of the, the data that I really liked um, on here where uh, um, they, they did find CCRC residents felt that they had an improved sense of self since moving into the CCRC. 81.2% of um, respondents uh, felt that they had, and this is again nationwide, all CCRCs that participate in the program, 81.2% of those respondents felt that they had improved, an improved sense of self. 75.7% of respondents felt that they were more informed and more involved in their own health care. And I really relate that to accessibility. It's that proximity idea again, where, um, where people are, are, are more able to connect with their uh, providers and, um, and feel like they're really a part of their own health care. And then um, third that I pulled, third, third piece of data I pulled 84.4% of respondents um, recommend their CCRC, the CCRC that they are living into others. And, and that is a question where they are actually um, um, quoting as saying that they have, uh, they have recommended somebody else to move into their community. So I thought that was a, a really nice statistic. Couple quotes that came out there. Some of these surveys do have uh, text boxes that people can fill in um, and, uh, and I guess kind of ad lib to. Um, but a, a couple that really stuck out to me. Um, one respondent quoted was quoted as saying, "I'm not living on memories. I'm making new memories," which I thought was really insightful into the change that you see when someone does move into a CCRC. It's not trying to hold on to to the past and, and the home people have lived in and maybe had their kids grow up in, but actually moving on to a new phase of life with new, uh, new memories to be made, new people to meet and uh, new interests to, uh, to learn. And then another um, respondent, uh, a little bit different area, but I like this quote because of that, uh, the, the more investment residents have in their own community, the closer the community becomes. So this really, again, goes back to that idea of autonomy. Um, and, and the way that CCRC residents are highly involved in the operations side um, to really match the operations to resident needs and desires. So I wanted to then take um, the field of gerontology into consideration here and uh, look at the theories on aging. So uh, gerontology really looks looks at, at aging and, and how we age. And, and, and there's, there's been many, many theories on, on how that process works. And we all know people that we consider, wow, that person really aged well. Um, and, and there's something about that person um, that, that makes us feel that way, that they've aged really well. And we might look at somebody else and say, wow, that person's really aged prematurely. 
So the field of gerontology really looked at this and said, so why is that? Why do some people age well and some people age prematurely? And I looked into the social aging theories here. Um, one of the most common that we'll hear about, this is a, these are big theories, so I'm going to try to really um, put them into a nutshell. But um, the disengagement theory um, is a theory that as we age, um, we do we, we do start going through some loss. Um, we, we, we do have, uh, you know, as we as we age, a lot of times our, our parents may have passed by that time. We may have um, other family members who have passed, a spouse who has passed away, friends who have passed away. Um, and, and we also might have this other angle of physical um, disability coming in. But but all these things lead to this uh, greater withdrawal and isolation from our our social norms that we're used to. And, and uh, this theory really states that as we age, we disengage. And as we disengage, we age, we, we continue to age more and more. Um, and uh, and um, that, that lack of, uh, of social interaction really reads, leads to that withdrawal and isolation, which, which just becomes greater and greater. Um, similarly, the activity theory is another social aging theory. And this, this is a, a theory that says that our, satisfactionally, our satisfaction relies on our ability to continue with activities and social interactions. So, um, so again, as, as, as we age, we might start um, looking at those meaningful activities that we've been doing. And for some reason, whether it be physical or mental or or uh, transportation or, or whatever it might be, we might start losing some of those meaningful activities. Um, the, to give an example, I, I know a lot of people really like to play golf and um, I've seen a lot of people that really have golf become really, really a, a high point in their life and, and they're you know, five day a week golfers. And then all of a sudden they, they, uh, they're not able to golf anymore because of, a, uh, because of a, let's say a Parkinson's disease diagnosis or even arthritis. And they lose that really meaningful activity. Um, this is the uh, this is the activity theory. They say as we lose those activities, our satisfaction um, decreases as well. So uh, so being able to maintain those activities uh, later into life can can actually help us uh, continue to be satisfied or have um, a higher quality of life, as we've been speaking of. I also noted here the successful aging theory, um, which really kind of ties those two together. Its main focus is that um, is is that uh, as we as we age, um, our our quality of aging is is completely dependent on how how much functioning we have into the later years of the life lifespan. So as we start losing the ability to function, um, we we become more debilitated. Um, we, we become more isolated and, uh, and our quality of life decreases in, in response. All right, just to summarize uh, this lecture today, we, uh, we started off, we defined quality of life and um, we, de we determined how, uh, how, how quality of life is, is, can be related to age um, through uh, through some of those social social uh, aging theories, um, we also talked about the dimensions of quality of life and, and came came to a, a a real way to define that and and we define that today as being a balance between physical, functional, emotional, and social well being, and then um, we also looked at uh, studies and research um, through uh, four different um, through different um, bodies there through different research projects. That really did tie uh, uh, quality of life um, and uh, CCRC. So uh, we did look at that um, that way that the CCRCs um, operate, what they what they include, um, um, a lot of the roles that they play in aging, and uh, and finish things up with uh, looking at the gerontologist those those um, those social scientists um, ideas on social aging theories and their impact on the way that we age and how, how we can maintain quality of life into, uh, into um, our senior years. And uh, last but not least, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, listening to me today. It's been a pleasure um, talking to you about CCRCs, which I, I fully have felt that uh, the whole reason I did, I did this project was to really kind of figure out why these, uh, these folks living in the CCRC do tend to have such a high quality of life for so long. And um, I hope I was able to share some of that with you.
Um, if anyone does have any questions, um, please uh, please post them in the um, in the comments box at the bottom of the screen. We'd be happy to uh, take a stab at them. There's also uh, uh, my phone number here at Patriots Colony. Um, if anybody had any questions later on or wanted to learn a little bit more about CCRCs, uh, you can reach out to me from that through that number. All right, thank you very much. Just taking a look at some of these questions. Oh, nice recommendation there from the Peninsula Ski Club um, with some water sports. Yeah, my family might like that. And uh, some, I think uh, Patricia here asked her rehab services um, ever available to those in independent living? And the answer is yes. We actually have two uh, rehab clinics at Patriots Colony. Um, one of those rehab clinics is a outpatient clinic that does serve our independent living. Um, and it, 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 it's, a, it's a very active clinic um, with uh, licensed therapy staff. Um, they do a great job. Our residents really like the fact that they can have those therapy services right here in the community rather than having to drive out to a, a really you know, busy, hectic clinic, um, our services are one-on-one, -on -one, which is a, a big plus. Um, Patricia also asked, are there uh, both profit and nonprofit CCRCs? And if so, what are the differences? What, if so, what differences affect residents? Um, I, I don't have a ton of information there, except that there are for-profit and nonprofit CCRCs. I, I work for a um, Patriots Colony is a nonprofit CCRC. Um, and you know, it, basically I, I you know, I know that our uh, you know our revenues do go back into the community. Um, being a non a, a not for profit, so uh, we're able to really put you know our our resources back into the community for um, improvements. Um, if you ever were able able to come on um, the Patriots Colony, you'd see that our landscaping here is beautiful and our facilities are always clean and up to date. So uh, so I think that is uh, you know one difference with CCRCs is is just that structure. And I think, I think that might be it. I got one new message here. And yeah, I did mention um, services, are, rehab services are available to everybody within the community. So uh, yes, that is not um, specifically for our nursing center. It is, it's uh, available for everyone. ADA is, uh, the American American with Disabilities Act. So it's a it's a it's an act that actually uh, um, has standards set um, for having things that are um, that having things built that are accessible to people with disability. Um, so they they set some good some guidelines, and we um, we were able to take those into account as we're uh, building. And actually, great question from Vinny is Patriots only for veterans. So that's a great question with a simple but a little bit complicated answer. Patriots Colony's independent living is, um, is the only part at Patriots Colony that is specifically for uh, uh, veterans. Um, our health center, including assisted living, memory care, and our skilled nursing facility um, are open to the public. So. Uh, so great question there, um, independent living um, for veterans, as well as uh, social, um, um, oh, social service, not social service, um, sorry, having a blank on that, but um, there are some other uh, um, government type jobs that uh, are, are passed by the board of directors for our independent living. Um, but again, 
our whole health center, including assisted living, memory care, and convalescent center, um, all, avail all av available for, um, for the general public. All right, well, I don't see any more questions popping up here. Um, uh, that last question, I think that's his Patriots colony uh, part of Riverside. Yes, um, to give you a little history on that. Um, Patriots colony was actually the brainchild of a um, a wonderful guy I used to know named um, General Archie Cannon from U.S. Army. Uh, he was retired and he, and he wanted a, a community to, uh, for retired military officers to come to. And um, his insight uh, back, uh, I guess we're about 25 years old now, um, his insight back 25 years ago was, was absolutely outstanding because when he decided to come up with that, he felt it was very, very important to, uh, to um, uh, really become affiliated with uh, with a, a, a good health system. And he, he approached Riverside way back in the planning process about being a part of this whole thing. And, and yes, Patriots Colony is part of Riverside Health System. Um, the, uh, the staff um, at Patriots Colony are all hired, hired through Riverside. Um, and, um, you know, here in, uh, in 2021, where we're using electronic medical records um, and, uh, Technology has become such a big part of, of overall care. Um, it, it is one of my favorite things about Riverside um, or, or about Patriots Colony. I mean, um, that, they, that we are affiliated with a, with a wonderful health system of Riverside. That, that I think that's, that's actually one of the biggest pluses. Um, the Gardens at Work Forest, um, it, it similarly, um, is a CCRC affiliated with Riverside, um, as well as uh, Sanders and uh, Gloucester. Um, all Riverside Continuous Care Retirement Communities. Um, and I see Harriet asked, what other CCRCs are good facilities? Um, that is such a, that's a very subjective um, statement, I, or, or it would be a very subjective answer. Um, CCRCs are going to have a little bit different flavors, and it's really good if you're shopping for a CCRC to really visit this, those, those communities and find out what flavor they are. Um, for instance, um, you might find that you go to one CCRC and the overall uh, feel of that might be um, really fancy and, and you, might, you might feel that their idea of a good time might be a wine and cheese. And, um, and certain people are really going to like that. Um, you might go to another CCRC and find that it's very casual and laid back and that its idea of a good time um, is a good game of pickleball and... Um, and having a beer afterward. Um, and so, so kind of different flavors, just like uh, neighborhoods out in the community, uh, different neighborhoods kind of have a different flavor. So uh, I, I think from a, from, from a shopping for a CCR standpoint, it's really good just to kind of get an understanding of what those CCRCs are like. Uh, one thing that we really like to do at Patriots Colony is when, when our marketing department does meet a person who, you know, is potentially going to become a new resident here, they're, they're in that shopping phase. They, um, they at that point um, will will match them up with some residents, have them dine with them, and things like that, so that they can they can get a good feel for for if they feel like the community is a fit for them or not. So um, that gives that gives a person the opportunity to really kind of meet what the residents are like. It's 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 a nice uh, practice, but I would really encourage you to do that. Um, let's see. I see here are there different plans. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking, Carolyn, you might be referring to um, different plans when you enter a continuous care retirement community. And, and yes, that could kind of differ between uh, communities that you, that you would come to. But a lot of uh, one, one common that you might see is that they might have a, a plan that's, um, that's re re really like a, um, a life care program where you come in um, to the CCRC at a um, at a basically a set rate and that set rate will accommodate you um, dependent on what area you uh, might need to move to in the future. 
Um, so uh, that would be like a life care plan. Um, there are other plans that are more of a fee for service plan where you come in and you, you basically pay um, the rate dependent on um, the, the area that you are. It's more, more of an a la carte type sy uh, system. Um, are they all in the same price range? Uh, depending on price range, I do think there are some co there are some commonalities there in price range. Um, it, it's it's probably a good idea uh, again to really really talk to the different um, communities and figure out exactly what their price range is. Um, you'll find that price range price ranges are often reflective of the area that you're living in. So if it's an area with high cost of living, those prices are going to look much higher. Um, than if you were looking at a community that was in a more, maybe a more rural area that has a lower cost of living, you'll see some changes in, in that. But, um, but uh, CCRCs, I mean, they, they do tend to compete. Um, so you will see definitely some commonality there in price range. All right. Well, I don't see any more questions, and I think it's about noon. So, uh, again, it was uh, it was great speaking with you all today, and um, I, I think it worked out, even though we had to do this on Zoom rather than over at the at the Yoder Theater. But uh, but really, uh, really good talk today. So, thank you.